It's just a little non -rever or this is a little reversible hack and slash experiment thing I'm doing with these uh, Philips LED lamps. Recently got a couple more of these things on clearance from Home Cheapo for really cheap, so I am um, willing to perform this. And this is also a completely reversible hack, with the exception of a little bit of a indenting on the plastic bits, which is only cosmetic. Um, really what I'm doing is I'm just switching around the lobes. So what I'm doing is I'm putting um, the L-Prize lamp lobes <coughs> on this regular remote phosphor lamp and the um, regular phosphor lobes on the L-Prize lamp. And mechanically these things appear to be identical right down to the tooling marks. So really the only difference in these is just the loading of the phosphor. And I don't know if there might be differences in the phosphor formulation. But you can uh, see this one is... Um, and the color difference is a bit more apparent in real life than it is on camera. But you can see that that one is visibly darker. In real life it appears more orange. Um, of course the lobes are identical but the... Uh, tops are not and um, so yeah, these are and one other thing that I've noticed is um, kind of as an addendum to the uh, partial tear down of these lamps and a few others that I did a while back it's really squishy because these um, Luxian Rebels are um, are um, the uh, outer casing is silicone instead of um, hard epoxy probably for thermal expansion re reasons um, these ones have this little um, black dye, which I'm guessing is some kind of a protection diode for the uh, LED thing. Whereas these in this older lamp, uh, these are what? Um, June 2011. And I see that this one doesn't. It has a little space for one, but the actual dye isn't there. They're just a little pad. And also the red ones have a somewhat interesting pattern structure in the LED for the uh, lead-in wires. There's also substrate being a different color but that's because th these are um, aluminum indium gallium phosphide instead of um, indium gallium nitride because as you increase the wavelength of the photons which means you're moving more towards the greens and the yellows um, indium gallium nitride gets less efficient and um, in places where, and um, at those wavelengths, um, as from what I've heard, um, the um, aluminum, aluminum indium gallium phosphide is a more efficient emitter, which is why most uh, red, orange, and yellow, as well as I think infrared as well, um, power LEDs and high brightness LEDs use that. Um, instead of uh, indium gallium nitride, so yeah. Of crap, wipe that away, and um, so yeah, just a little random experiment. And this is just a rough comparative test with the um, modified L prize lamp with the regular lamp lobes compared with a 35 watt high pressure sodium lamp. And this one is noticeably very almost pinkish in comparison when compared to the HPS, which is the very distinct. Um, HPS whitish yellow that you've probably all seen. You can discern colors but to a certain degree and um, of course obviously the the, um, the red, the orange, um, the yellow and to a lesser extent the green are the uh, dominant colors. With just a little bit of um, green and blue and purple from the uh, mercury component of the discharge which is added to help uh, um, increase the potential drop in the arc per unit length of the arc tube and uh, it helps make for more compact lamps because there are mercury free high pressure sodium lamps but those are noticeably yellower and the arc tube is substantially longer in those than in regular HPS lamps and this one's obviously very pink and the um, modified regular lamp is blue just have these as bits of paper towels over them as diffusers Obviously, you would not want to do this with a um, incandescent or even probably some compact fluorescent lamp, just because of how hot, hot they can get. Um, but yeah, this one's very much like uh, uncolored corrected mercury, except this one you actually can determine red because there is some red emission from the phosphor, more so than a regular 
And so it would actually be an interesting thing to use these as substitutes for um, high pressure mercury lamps and things where you wanted the appearance but without the high power consumption because they start at about 50 watts and um, they're also fairly expensive. But then again, so are these. At least new. This one is very pinkish, probably in places where you'd use things like soft pink lamps, it would possibly see a use. And of course, those are HPS, so fairly bright anti bug lighting. Although, you probably want to, if you could get a coating that would that could withstand the heat, um, because the envelope can get pretty hot because of the uh, convective losses to it from the gas fill uh, discharge lamps like this, especially high pressure mercury lamps um, can run substantially hotter than equivalent power rating incandescent lamps because incandescent lamps about 70 amp percent of the energy that goes into the thing or 60 amp to 70 amp percent of it is infrared light that just passes right through the lamp in the fixture which is also why infrared la or incandescent lamps are very effective as um, high power infrared illuminators even today it's just a random experiment, and of course, do not attempt what you see home, especially with exposed mains. And it's one of my little suicide cords that I have clip leads on because I can't find any um, suicide cords with bare wires. Otherwise, I'd put wire nuts on them as well. Oh, and suicide cord is somewhat macabre slang for just a, a cord that is a plug on one and and bare and other bare wires or clips on the other for testing equipment purposes. So yeah, do not attempt this at home, and then for electrocution, blah blah blah, um, I know at least in this lamp, or in the newer version, and presumably in this as well, the um, driver is completely isolated, but there's still about 30 odd volts, which is getting a bit close for comfort, especially with sharp things, there is, would, could possibly be a risk of electrocution, this one I don't know the archi internal architecture of, because um, they're sufficiently rare now that, until I get a dead one, I'm not going to cut it open, because I only have half a dozen of these, and I want to make them last, knock on wood. Like a crappy card table that's disintegrating and that we need to replace. So yeah. Just me doing these things so that you, the viewer, do not have to. Blah, blah, blah.